where we need to inform you that all advice that we may give you this morning is what we call general advice. And before you act upon any of that advice, you should consider it within your own personal financial circumstances or seek the advice of a financial professional before you do. Your job over the next couple of hours is to get as much information as possible. I guarantee that the more you put into today's presentation, the more you'll get out of it. That means if I ask you a question, please participate. Don't sit there like a stunned mullet waiting for somebody else to give the answer. Um, you were all amongst friends, and even if you're not, you're never going to see these people again anyway. So shout out the answer if you've got it, put your hand up and get involved. And I guarantee that the more you give me, the more I'll be able to give you back in return. Is that okay? Oh, I think we've just failed the first, the first bit, isn't it? Shout the answer out. Okay, so let's go on with that. Um, with that in mind, I'll give you one more test, see if you can get this one right. Um, show of hands, please, big show of hands. How many people in the room are here to learn more about their investing? Super, much, much better response. Great, okay. Let's kick off the presentation by talking about the current market situation. Good or bad right now? What's the biggest problem that uh, the world is facing at this point in time? The debts, isn't it? The debts of who? Europe. Yeah, Europe, the, the pigs, isn't it? Do you know what I mean when I say that it's the pigs that are the problem? Portugal, Portugal Italy, Ireland, uh, Greece and Spain, isn't it? And uh, if you remember back to the last GFC we had, what does GFC stand for? Geelong Football Club? No. The Global Financial Crisis. Those three letters are geez, synonymous with people losing money and horrible things happening uh, in, in the global markets, of course. Well, the last GFC was caused predominantly by companies taking on too much debt, getting into trouble with that debt, and eventually going bankrupt, wasn't it? That was the last GFC. This GFC, that is potentially we're in one, maybe it started a few weeks ago, What's this, what's this one being caused by? Not companies going bankrupt, but countries, countries going bankrupt. So I need to put to you, well, which one do you think is going to be worst? It's a big deal now, isn't it? It's a big deal. Um, and certainly the market's taken a big hit over the last few weeks. And you see up on the screen there how the market was going pretty well up to that high and then took a really big hit. And I guess a lot of people might be sitting there looking at their portfolios, number one, thinking, geez, that's... That's not looking too good anymore, but geez, hopefully, hopefully, there's that word, isn't it? Hopefully, not a good word to use with your investing, is it? Hopefully, it can't get any worse. Can it, can it get worse? Yeah. Of course it can. Well, the problem with that is um, that's not the market now. I've tricked you. That's the share market back when it fell from the high in November 2007 down to about 5,000 and a bit. That's, that's what it looked like last time when the last GFC just started. And everything was going gangbusted, buses, the market fell down, and people thought, that's okay, it'll go back up. Surely it can't get any worse. That's the market now. That's the market right now. So I'll just go backwards and forwards. Backwards and forwards. They're almost identical, aren't they? So I think there's a lot of people in the same situation right now going, geez, I hope it can't get any worse. And you know what? It's not so bad because I only lose if I... Sell, isn't it? Yeah, I'm glad you filled in that blank. A lot of people say, it's okay, I only lose if I sell. You know, when it goes back up, I'll be all right. And we've seen that, well, that was last time, that's this time, and this is what happened last time, isn't it? So we went from here, that was at the top, all the way down to here. Now, the question is, uh, from where we are right now, how, how low could it go? And if we are in another GFC, we could be in big trouble. I'll just take all those questions at the end. It's really important we just keep moving with this presentation. Um, market through that period of time fell about 55%, okay, about 55%, and a lot of people's uh, self-managed super funds fell by probably close to that. Um, on the way back up, though, quite interestingly, it rallied about 63% to go from that bottom back up to that high. Doesn't make much sense, does it? For something to go down 55%, go back up 63% and still not be anywhere near where it started. Why is that? How can something go down 55, up 63 and not be back where it was? It's coming from a different base, isn't it? It's just maths now, isn't it? So let's use round numbers here. If you start off with 100% and you lose 50%, you've got 50% left, don't you? How much do you need to make on that 50% to get back to 100? 100%, don't you? You need to double. If you halve, you need to double again to get back where you were. And we certainly didn't double, did we? 
And this is a major, major problem with us because how often does a market go up 63% in about 12 or 13 months? Not very often, isn't it? It doesn't really happen, yet we did it. So you really need to question the sustainability of that rally back up to those old highs, especially now that we're seeing what's happening in Europe. Um, now, I don't want to, I'm not trying to scare you about that. I'm just trying to put the reality of this situation that's in front of us as investors. And I say us because it's in front of all of us. Okay? And the performance of that squiggly line on that computer screen actually affects everybody in this room whether they like it or not, doesn't it? It can affect you directly because you're holding shares. It can affect you just as directly because you've got a superannuation fund. Or it can affect you directly because the, the wealth of those companies and the share market values of those companies could affect you keeping a job, isn't it? So it is important to understand what that thing is doing and how it affects us. Okay, a lot of people did lose a lot of money in that last GFC. Unfortunately, a lot of people have already started to lose some money in this, hopefully not, new GFC, isn't it? Now, the question I've got for you is, well, um, if you have lost some money, well, what are you, you going to do about it? You're going to get bitter about it and say, oh, the market's crazy and oh, this is stupid. It shouldn't, this shouldn't be happening. Why is this happening? Do we get bitter or what's the next part of this slide? Don't get bitter, get... Even. Who said even? Get even. Who, that's like a Clint Eastwood movie. <laughs> you can't, not get even. Who are you going to get even with? Um, get active, get... Better, isn't it? Don't get bitter about the money you've lost. Get better so that it doesn't happen to you again. And I would say that if you've lost some money in the past and you're still doing the same sort of processes that cause you to lose that money, what can you expect for your future? To lose that money again, isn't it? Now, what is it going to take for you to get from bitter to better? One word I'm looking for, I'll give you a hint. It's in the title of what I do. Knowledge, learning, education, isn't it? That's why I'm the head of education. And I think the one key factor to get you from bitter to better is education on how to protect yourself from what happened, what happened last time happening again, isn't it? And really, that's what we're here for.